Hello everybody, this is Nicholas Carter with a workshop on a Cuban song called La Paloma. La Paloma means the dove and it's sort of an endearing way to call somebody that you love. Uh, it's a song about somebody who left the Havana and is missing, I guess, their loved one. It's a popular song, very well, very well recorded, I guess, all over all over the world. And when I uh, travel around and I do workshops, well, I find that this is probably one of the easiest songs to teach. The rhythm is, is not difficult. It's a four by four. And um, it's a simple, simple melody. And people grasp it really, really easily. Um, the song, by the way, is gonna be in, in C major. And let me introduce just a couple of things about I guess the way I learned to play and about the instrument because uh, I know that most of the people that attend the uh, harp festivals are, are Celtic bass uh, folk uh, players and uh, this is uh, a Paraguayan harp. If you haven't seen it before, this is uh, the national folk instrument of Paraguay. It's a 36 string harp. And one of the first things I tell people is because people are looking at my strings and see how I put my hand in and uh, it gets, they go sort of a little confused because my red is a G and my uh, blue is a D in this Paraguayan harp. I have another one where the red is an F and the blue is a D. But um, anyways, that is just, um, we've got the colors, essentially we just have the colors reversed. No, and uh, that, that's a little confusing. So that's why a lot of times when I do this workshop, I tell people what notes I'm playing so they're they hear the notes and uh, hear my voice, but maybe not necessarily have to try to, with their eyes, uh, find out where my hand placement is. Um, yeah, that's one thing that's important to know. The other thing is that, um, you know, the style of, of how we play this instrument is also different. And uh, I guess if you can see here, my fingernails, they're long in both hands. And so, uh, that, that changes things also in the, in the way we kind of approach the strings. And the last thing is that our strings are closer together. So there's certain hand positions that um, we do that are not necessarily comfortable for people who, who play the, the, the Celtic harp. So uh, this song, by the way, and I am uh, hoping that what will be included is a download of the music. It's a... Uh, available uh, in my book, Melodias de Larpa. You can find this on my website too. It has a lot of uh, Latin American melodies. Uh, this was a, a collaboration with Sharon Thermalin and uh, we adapt, she adapted many of the songs that I play so that the fingering and the arrangements are accessible to pe people that play the Celtic uh, lever harp. And uh, so the song is in here, and I hope I can also share the music, and you can download it and see the music while I'm playing this. And I just wanted to say that there's a hand position that we use to play melodies in the Paraguayan style, um, which is sort of, you hold on to the octave, G, G, right? My thumb is my in the high G, and then my fourth finger is on the lower G. And then we play on the six. Right, so it's got the one, I guess, the six, and the eight. And uh, so the melody is on the on this octave, and the harmony is. And because of the fingernails, then we, you know, we, we can do some of the long notes, basically. That, that type of sound effect. So when you look at the uh, at the music, you will notice that this, this position is there. It's like a cookie cutter position. We kind of get used to it. I know that in some harps playing octave and this position is kind of awkward. And so what I suggest to people and you'll, and is to learn the melody just very simply instead of playing the octave, just play single notes. You're just looking at the top note and these little, and this, of this position and you're just reading that basically and you'll be able to, to play the song. So I'll start out by first playing the very simple, just just one single note to play the melody and the second time around you'll see what the feel is like when you play with the in this in this position
So now I'm going to play the, the version with uh, the hand position that I was talking to you about earlier. Here we go, here's the hand position. Now when I, when I play in this hand position, I can do the long notes, you know, just playing them over and over and over again really quickly, like this. Second time, let's play a little better. Sometimes we make this faster, this last part. Like you know, when I when I play the 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 harp, I you know I don't always play anything exactly the same thing. All the embellishments and all those kind of details, I just keep adding those depending on how I feel that day, how I feel uh, in the moment. And uh, definitely it does help to play in front of people, not in front of a camera, because then you, you get the feeling of, well, how should you play it for this group of people today? So anyways, let's, uh, so that's uh, a little bit about the Baloma and two different ways of playing it. So if we're going to learn the melody, and um, the melody is... Uh, is very simple, but maybe oh, before the melody, how about we just work on the on the bass pattern? There's only uh, three chords, I guess, in this song. So the chords are also um, written in the music on the top. I normally, when I look at uh, uh, music, I follow the chord charts, you know, and so you can easily learn this song because. The bass pattern, you don't have to read every single note in the bass pattern. All you have to do is know the pattern and then know when the changes come. And that's that's pretty much about it. So this one, if again we have this, this octave position for the bass, uh, uh, the one would be a C. And we're going to play a C chord basically. And then so our eight, our thumb would be on another C. And then our index finger, it's going to be on the one, two, three, four, five, on the five, which is the G. And so it sounds like this. So it's the one, five, eight, five, one, five, eight, one. So it's C, G, C, C, G, C, G, C, G, C, G, C. So let's just work on that for a little bit. Keep the steady beat going. Bum, 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 bum. This is a four by four song. Here we go. So now I'm just gonna, we're going to just practice playing the, the bass pattern of this song. I'm going to sing the melody. La, la, I'm in C. I'm in C and I'm in C until I go to G. Now same pattern here in G. I got G, D, G, D, G, D, G, D, G. 
energy, I stay in G, and I stay in G, and I go back to C. So it's all just a pattern that we have to remember. C, C, the same melody repeats over again. La, 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 you see the change to G. In G. And we stay in G and we go back to C. There we go, now we're back in C. Now in C. G. G. Back to C. Now we're gonna go up to C again. Got it, right? Back to C. We're in C, right? Up to G. And now to F. That's uh, G. Back to C. So I hope you got that. I hope you'll be able to play along with me that little sequence where I'm just kind of calling out the little chords changes. So that's the bass pattern. And then you get that groove in your system, you practice that a lot over and over and over again, then you're not even thinking of the left hand. That's kind of how, how I've always tried to work. I've tried to make sure I get the rhythm of the song. This is a bass pattern that's sort of on auto, automatic pilot. I don't have to think about it anymore and I can just use it anytime I want. Here we go. The great thing about this song is only three chord changes. It's mostly a, a C going to a G. Only once does it go to F major, okay? We're, by the way, we're in the in the key of uh, C major. I should have mentioned that when we started. Okay, so now let's just work on learning the melody of the song, okay? So we'll make it very simple. We're um, in G, G on E. I'm going to repeat that phrase one more time. Again. So it's on, we start on G and then we, we our hand goes to E and when we just pretty much go up the scale. Okay, one more time. We're going to do this. It's called a little drilling bit until you almost mem you memorize this. G, G, on E. Going up. One more time. Again. time now the cool thing about a recording is that you can always go back if you didn't get this section yet you can always go back now we're gonna go to the next phrase associated with this one so it's G D E C D B C B A G E. One more time, this phrase. One more time, this phrase. 
sorry. One more time, this phrase with me. Here we go. Again. One more time. So one of these times is going to stay. One more time. So we're going to do it from the beginning. We're going to join the two phrases together. G, G. Up to, down to E, going up. The next phrase. G, D, up to E, going down. One more time, there we go. time then we're gonna take a break how about that G G down to E and going up now it's G D E well I hope that uh, is is helpful to repeat it um, Many times, the great thing about a recording is that you can always rewind and go through these two phrases over and over and over and over and over again. That's normally the way I teach is uh, work, 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 repeat, repeat, repeat. And the good thing about uh, a recording is that when you're tired, you can always pause the recording and then continue. Maybe working on this, the next phrase a little bit later in the day, take a break. I always think it's it's great not to just drill, 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 and, and then get your uh, uh, arms worn out. I think it's great to practice a little bit, relax, come back, practice a little bit, relax, and that's sort of my that's been kind of my approach and my my suggestion. So, anyways, that that's phrase one and phrase two, I guess you know. And now we go to the next little section, and it starts on C. C, 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 B, D, D. I did a little twirl there. You, you know, if you want to do it, it's just a little decoration. But here we go again, this section. Again, and C, 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 B, D, D, C, B, A, A. G again. Mm. One more time. That's uh, the other phrase um, that follows. And my suggestion, by the way, is if you if you don't want to work with two hands at the same time, the first time you go through this with me, just play along with the uh, with the right hand 
get the melody used to, or play along over and over with the left hand until you finally feel like you if you feel like you want to join the two hands together. Again, this is everything is is a process and when you you do a workshop you've got all these people and then you go and you work with each individual student based on wh where they're at um, and uh, so it's kind of strange to do a, a, a video when you're so used to interacting with people I guess there's there's a whole art to this recording so anyways here we go and I'm gonna do that phrase one more time here we go C C B D D C B A A time and then the tag phrase to this one is B B B A A G G A G A again that tag phrase going to join the phrases before that one and this one so it's on C right and I'm going to join the two phrases together now the one I'm starting on B it's hard to talk and play at the same time again I'm going to join the two phrases Here we're going to continue uh, the next little part of the song. It goes, it's uh, the section C. It goes. So I'm going to do it one more time. And then it's going to go up the scale. So I'll just play it. One more time. the scale after that. That's from E going up. So we're gonna do that one more time. Up the scale from E. So we, we go up the scale, we pretty much go all through each note. We skip the C and we hit the, from B we go to D. Here we go, one more time. Up. One more time. time we hit F is right here when we hit the G sorry the F so it's F D C D C D D E D D
Take it from the little phrase before, we're going to tag it along here. Going up the scale from E. Now here's the F. Alright, and the last phrase. So now we're going to just... Uh, from G going up to C. B, G. And so I'll just put these three little ideas together. Here we go, sorry. On the F. From G going up. One more time. time. So, okay, one more time. That last phrase. You almost got the entire songs, folks. I'm not going to do it without the octaves this time. On G. Going up from E. D. F. E. Going up. Okay, so now let's play the entire, I guess, all these different phrases together. Let's play it from the beginning. Now I'm going to start playing now with the this style, the way it's written on the script, so you can kind of get the feel of it. Also, if you want to play along, here we go. We G D. We didn't work on that little last section yet. So let's work on that one. It's very easy. It's G, C, G, C, G, C, G, B, G, B, G, B, G, A, B, C, G, B, G, C, G, 
C G B G B G B G A B C One more time. I'm going to go through the song uh, a couple more times and this time just kind of like having a little more freedom. I've kind of like been playing in a very sort of controlling myself to be as simple as possible so that you can learn the song. But when I play it, I, I, I give myself a little bit of freedom to improvise, to decorate differently. And, and I don't, you know, the thing is that I don't really know what I'm going to do. I just make it happen. Here we go. You want to play along with me? Here we go, G. Going up from E. with uh, the Mexican musicians, they like to speed up the end. Now oh, that's the style, that's a very Mexican thing, a way to end. Basically, you go up the scale. That's, that's kind of a a very typical end. I mean, there's so many different ways that you can maybe discover that you would like to end this song. Maybe you want to fade it away very gently. Go up a little higher. Slow it down. That's another way to end it. And there's so many different things that, that, that when we play, we do. I mean, if I, if I do, I could play this kind of tremolo version.
of the possibility. So, you know, there's a lot of freedom. And let me just show you some of these different little techniques, you know, this uh, tremolo effect. I mean, you do need a little bit of a nail. Even a minimal nail, you'll be able to achieve this sound. Uh, I, I usually support a little bit my hand. Can you see my hand support a little bit on the side so there's a little bit of steadiness? And then with the nail, I go back and forth, back and forth. The movement takes place from the knuckle. It doesn't take place in the middle of the finger. It's, it's the knuckle that moves back and forth. And uh, it's just practice. The pad of my finger touches the next note that I don't want to play, right? I just, I'm just playing one single note here. And so by touching the pad, the next, my pad touches the next note as a way to kind of control it from moving any, anywhere else. So that's the, the tremolo effect that I was using a little bit. Then a little staccato sound effect here. As you notice, I'm just putting a little bit of weight, a little bit of strength on this part of my hand, and I'm plugging at the same time. I mean, this is kind of a little awkward, but I kind of like it. I get a little bit of a, of a, it's, it's almost like, it's almost like getting the, the little, uh, what do you call this? I forgot already, but you know what I'm talking about. But instead of getting that sound, you're getting a little more of a drive a dry sound by keeping the entire hand kind of holding the string so not, none of them really vibrate too much. You just get a little staccato sound. So those are just little decorative motifs. This is a love song after all. So I mean, sometimes when I was playing it, I, I, I try to feel the melody. So that's why I say the independence of the left hand is so important because um, the more skills you have with your left hand to decorate, the more you can kind of feel the melody and you just try to like open it up. I also learned the song really I, I think by playing with Mexican trios and they would sing and um, so I learned it from a singing point of view and not so much from uh, an instrumental point of view so that might be a great way to also uh, consider um, is finding in YouTube La Paloma and see different artists singing it. That might be kind of a an inspiration. So I guess this is all for now, folks. I, um, I tell you, I really miss not seeing people here live while I'm giving this class. And just talking to my camera, I get, I'm not getting the same feedback. I don't have absolutely any questions from people. <laughs> so if you do want to ask me a question, feel free to, uh, you know, send me a message on, uh, on uh, you know, I, I don't know, uh, Facebook, Nicholas Carter, or if you want on Gmail, harpistnicholas at gmail.com. I have a website. You can find uh, recordings there and a lot of information about my work. Uh, nicholascarter.com, www.nicholascarter.com. This book is available there on the website as well as, you, you know, you can order CDs. And, and I guess what I always say to people, the best way to learn um, that music is just listening to others and getting inspired by their work and then adding your own little take, your own little stamp. Nice to have you here at this workshop. Thank you so much and my greetings to all of you and especially uh, we hope to see you I guess uh, next year, 2021. Yeah, time goes by fast. Bye.